All right, well, there is a question that you guys ask me repeatedly in the comments. And I'm gonna cover that today. And the question is, what is the range of this bike? What's the range with the controller upgrade? What's the range with the new battery? Can you do a range test? Range test in pedal assist three, range test in pedal assist two, range test with throttle only. Just endless amount of range, 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 range questions. And uh, I've done a range video before. If you look back in my uh, videos, you'll see it in there. And that's a very common question I get. And I'm gonna tell you why I don't plan on doing a range test anytime soon. So let's uh, stop in the shade because it's hot again in North Carolina. It is so hot here. I was trying to do a video last night and just had too many camera issues, but it was so hot out that, you know, I've got an ambient temperature indicator on this screen here. It's 95 right now, but yesterday it was reading double zero because it was over a hundred. So that's what happens when it gets over hundred. It says zero zero. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. You are taking a look right now at my very heavily modified Rad Rover. It's a 2018 model. I've owned it for two years now. It's been a great bike. I recently chose to do a lot of upgrades to it. So we've done a new controller, 35 amp controller, a new battery, went to a 50 volt, 52 volt, 17.5 amp hour battery. We did a new 750 Bafang motor in the rear hub and new display screen. Yeah, in addition to all the other, you know, gadgets and gizmos and accessories you see on the bike. And uh, all those power upgrades just transformed this thing into a 1700 watt beast. It's crazy. The amount of power this thing has now, it's, I mean, any hill is just a cakewalk. It accelerates like crazy. I am extremely pleased with it. I'm very pleased. So if you're here because you have a rad power bike or you're looking at buying one, I've got good news for you. And that is that there is some like aftermarket support for this. There's like, several websites that have like a Rad Rover upgrade section on them. Bolt Knee Bikes is one. Uh, Electro Bike World is another. Where you can get all these little goodies that just fit and kind of plug into your bike if you got a Rad Rover. So, all right. So I'm going to tell you why not to expect another range test video from me anytime soon. And there's several reasons for that. So the first one is I don't really get that kind of time to go out and ride 60 miles. I got a lot of stuff going on right now. I still work a full-time job and full-time dad and try to do YouTube on the side and I got to edit and ride my other motorcycles. It's time is a premium right now. So there's time constraints. Um, also, I really don't like doing range test videos, honestly. They're, I don't know, they're just not much fun. I don't get enjoyment out of them as much as I do the other like upgrade videos and things. So, but anyway, the overall reason that I don't really want to do another range test is that there's just, there's so many factors. There's too many factors that come into play. And I don't know how you will ever do a video that people are going to agree on and say, yep, that's right. That's about the range of that bike. That's accurate. I mean, off the top of my head, you got to take into consideration things like the rider's weight, the terrain you're on. Are you riding on trails through the woods? Are you riding on paved greenways? Are you riding up a lot of hill? Is it very hilly? Is it flat? Is it extremely hilly? Is it like San Francisco? I mean, I would think even the, you know, the quality of your battery, the cells used is probably going to come into play how heavy you are on the throttle, what pedal assist you're in, uh, you know, when you do pedal, how much effort are you putting in? I would think even the air temperature might affect a battery's performance in the range. So there's just, there's just so many things to factor into it that I don't know that you're really gonna get an accurate, I can't tell you the range is this. I don't know, it's gonna, it's totally rider terrain dependent and you know how much you're going to use the throttle that, that's the best thing i can say is how much do you use the throttle that's what's going to kill your range so there you go it's like car gas mileage you know i mean are you burning the tires at like every stop sign then you're probably going to get crappy range out of your car so that's why i'm probably not going to do another range video they're just i don't know they're not fun and they're I don't know how accurate they're gonna be. So I'll leave it to you guys to you know, test the range. Maybe that's a better idea. Maybe everyone that has a bike 
can put in the comments what they get out of it. And this video comment section will be a one-stop shop for people who want to see how many miles you're getting out of each bike. I, when I had the original 48 volt battery on it, on that range test, I got over 30 miles out of it and the battery went down half. It went down two out of four bars and the voltage meter was at like 45.4, I think it was. So I think you can do some math there and figure out how much was left. I don't know where the battery cutoff is before it just cuts out because the voltage is too low. I have no idea, but I can safely say I'm, I'm pretty confident I could probably ride this bike for 40 miles if I wanted to very easily. I mean, I did it 30, over 30 miles on a 48 volt, 14 amp hour, I think it was on that battery. And this one's 17.5 amp hour. So, and that's another reason to, I, I don't care about range. It's irrelevant for me. I'm, I ride like 10 to 20 miles at a time, 20 at the most. It's most of my rides are about 10 miles. So I don't even think about range, not a concern of mine. There you go. I'm going to do other videos. I got a few other things planned. Spoiler alert. We are doing some brake stuff. I got the brake parts in, so we're going to do that. We're going to take a shot at increasing the performance of these stock Rad Rover brakes. Right now, I'll tell you, they suck. <laughs> I mean, I've got this like wobble that happens when I hit the brakes hard and I don't know exactly why that is. If for the longest time the rotor was bent and you know, it's since been bent back. So I don't know if having it bent for a long time wore the brake pads funny or maybe wore you know, some grooves or something to the rotors. I don't know, but it's not a confident feeling when you slam on the brakes on this baby right now. And the front end here, the forks tend to kind of, you know, they kind of wobble too under some hard braking pressure. So I'm hoping that the new brake calipers that I have are going to fix that. If not, I might have to replace this as well, the, the rotor disc there. So we shall see if it, if it fixes that. I, uh, I'm probably not going to go full hydraulic for those of you who want to see that. I'm not going there yet. It might happen in the future. But anyway, I will be sure to share that experience with you. That's really the goal of my channel. I put that in one of my last videos. I've kind of been just figuring out what the main goal of this is. And, and really it's three things. It's, you know, share my experiences with the bike and with other bikes too. Um, just add that user perspective out into the world. Share any knowledge I've gained over what things work and what don't. And, good buys, bad buys, and also just inspire some other people to get out there on their bike or to get a bike or to upgrade their bike or to get out and do something positive in the world, I guess. So but that's about all for today. Stay tuned for some more videos. I've actually got an interesting one I'm going to do here. Hopefully have it out by the next weekend. Um, that'll be, I want to tell you some things about the motor install that I did. Some important things that were I wish I would have known or I wish I would have done when I did the motor. It's functioning fine and it's no problem. I think I've got, let's see, I reset my trip meter when I did all the upgrades. I've got 64 miles right now on the bike. It's functioning perfectly, no problems, but there are some things about the motor that you should know if you're going to do that swap and I wish I would have done when I did it. So watch for that video too. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe so you know when it comes out. Talk to you later.